What's up, YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today, I was going to talk to you about a really common, really cool house plant. Uh, I think a lot of you know it as a snake plant. Now it's got many different common names, but the official scientific name is Sansevieria trifasciata for this guy. Uh, kind of the taller, longer ones. And the shorter, stubbier ones are like Robusta and uh, don't often get as tall, but they can get uh, some height to them. But you probably heard it as uh, Mother-in-Law's Tongue, St. George's Sword, and I think it's called the Viper's Bowstring Hemp. Uh, and that's just because a lot of the fibers that are in the leaves and everything are one that uh, was really common, especially back in the older days, to make bowstring. So there are very different uh, kinds of different names for it. I think in China, it is the tiger's tail orchid. And then in Japan, it's also just called the tiger's tail. Uh, but Sansevieria is what it's known as, and this is a trifasciata. Now, I wanted to show you how to transplant it, but that can be kind of tricky because these guys prefer to be pretty pot bound. They like to have it really tight in there and the tightness and the compactness kind of help with the rhizomes and enable it to kind of grow and kind of spread out more. So they do really like kind of tight cramped spaces. Usually I don't replant mine for about three to four years just because I want them to really Fill in the pot but using a pot I would probably go with plastic just because they are able to warp a little bit easier and you can kind of get a good feel and see how tight it is right there and anything that's kind of uh, terracotta will probably burst if you're not really paying attention to that and actually kind of shatter can end up hurting a leaf or something like that but plastic is really ideal and as it gets bigger you don't want all that added weight of your pot so just keep that in mind if they do like to be pot bound you think it is a little tight I would probably wait a little bit just because the tighter the better with them but with this guy you can tell his pot is starting to warp and that really is just telling me that it is getting really cramped in there and I'll go ahead and put him in the next biggest pot I believe that's kind of about a 10 inch and I check the other one out and it feels really snug down in here so when I take him out of this one and put him in this one it will still be a little tight though not as tight as this one and I'd say he'd be good in there for about a three or four years now depending on where you have these guys they can grow a little fast but mostly they are kind of slow growers uh, so they come from the tropical regions of like Africa I think from like Nigeria to the Congo and then they're found in Asia as well so they do okay in kind of bright indirect light I would say the kind of brightest indirect light that you can get for a plant is really what these guys will thrive in but the reason why they're so popular is because they can kind of fit in a wide range of light. They don't have to have it extremely bright uh, with direct sunlight because you can scorch the leaves if you're not careful with it. But on the other hand, uh, they can pretty much behave really well in really low light standards too, kind of like an office space or a mall or something like that. I mean, these are really popular plants and not just because of the light, but also because they're really easy to take care of. I know on this ticket, uh, when I bought this plant, it said it's like a plant of steel and that's just kind of saying that it's really hard to kill. They don't really need a whole lot in the way of attention. Feedings, you can kind of dilute by half and the all purpose plant fertilizer really works well with them. They are a foliage plant, so a little bit of nitrogen will do these guys really well. And then with heat, they like the same kind of temperatures we do. And water, they're not too big on drinking. Their rhizomes down below the soil get really kind of thick and flesh and bulbousy. Uh, and that allows them to kind of hold on to a lot of water and make it through a drought. So they're really easy plants to take care of. They're not fussy at all. Just kind of get them in a nice little pot, keep it away from any kind of cool, drafty, heat kind of areas or anything like that uh, with an air vent or a window or a door. And you're fine. You really are. These guys are really good plants to have they can last a long time and uh, they're just really pretty I really like the leaves and I like this kind of color my fiance wanted a solid dark one instead of the kind of uh, leaves uh, variegated on the edges but Lowe's only had this one so I was really happy with it and then in the end that's all that matters is me so whether or not I'm happy is good we'll just leave it at that now as I said I want to show you how to repot these guys uh, so I will start by kind of squeezing and loosen it up, the ball and all the soil. 
and just be really gentle because I mean you do have kind of thick fibrous rhizomes down below there that can kind of break so just be very cautious of that now if you're like me and you do a majority of your planting and repotting and everything indoors get one of these things these little plastic sterilite things are really great to have I mean they're not gonna fix me up totally but they really kind of do catch a majority of all the dirt and everything and I'm hoping that I can just kind of pushing out and I won't have to cut but I can't tell as of now yeah he'll just slide right out of there now if you got a big plant like me it may help to have somebody else help you but take your time because he will kind of fall apart and then you'll start losing some leaves but don't panic because you can fix that when you pot them especially if it's really wet uh, it will start to fall apart so never fear we'll fix that once we get him into his new spot and as I was saying these guys will succumb to rot relatively easily so make sure that you're taking any kind of precaution that you can uh, to make sure that it drains all the way whether that's using some cacti and succulent soil mixture especially down around the bottom that way it just kind of allows the water to kind of move around and get in and out uh, without hanging out in the pot and making sure that your pot has adequate drainage holes now this guy, this pot that I got, had about six, and I used every single one of them. So uh, if you're not, you will end up losing several leaves or your whole entire plant. So just keep that in mind. Now I've got my root rake and my pruning shears. I've sanitized both, and I will take the root rake and just kind of knock off little excess soil around the roots. Now you can bang your roots up, whatever you need to do, uh, but don't worry about hurting them because you can remove about 60% of the roots without actually killing your plant. But I wouldn't do a whole lot in the way of that. Now, here comes the hard part. You may need some help with this, uh, just depending on how big your plant is and how much soil you have. Uh, you can trim some of the roots back Although, uh, like I said, it does like to be pot bound, so I'm not gonna trim a whole bunch off in the way of the roots. Now, when I was doing research on how to best transplant this guy, uh, it says that you do want a little bit of it below the soil line. Uh, so keep that in mind whenever you're going to add new soil in, that uh, you do wanna set it down a little bit in the pot. And take care not to get uh, a bunch of soil down in between the snake plant. A little bit's not going to hurt it, but a bunch may. Remember, as you're adding soil in, kind of tamp it down a little bit to get rid of any of those air bubbles that are down in and around the roots that will actually harm your plant and your roots. So take care to compact it some. That'll help hold your plant in there and get rid of those pesky air bubbles that the roots don't like. trying to hurt the roots you're just compacting it with a little bit of effort not a whole lot at all I just kind of gently pack it down and keep adding soil 
until you get to where you want it to be. But I would cover up about an inch to half an inch of uh, the previous spots of the leaves. So any kind of like uh, little white spots right here that you see that was probably underground, I would go ahead and add a little bit more soil to that. Just for a little bit of added support. And to make sure that all the rhizomes are nicely tucked in there. Now, as I was saying, it is um, about the middle of October, almost the middle of October. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it another uh, into November, towards the end of October, uh, because these guys can actually go into a little bit of a rest mode for the winter time. And if you do this while it is resting, it can probably confuse the plant, uh, especially with this Miracle Grow substrate that I'm using, because uh, it does have fertilizer in it uh, and then your plant will start, actually start to feed a little bit and then not think that it needs to go into our resting phase so but with mine being indoors and uh, I think he'll be just fine now this uh, substrate that I'm using is actually pretty wet so I will not water him and when I got him uh, he was really wet as well now fortunately I am able to clean this up pretty quick uh, so I know it does look a little bit off-putting right now but hopefully you won't be as messy as I am uh, again if you're worried about the air bubbles watering your plant right after repotting it will help get rid of the air bubbles in fact that is strongly recommended that you do go ahead and water this guy but as I was saying uh, he was watered whenever I got him and the soil that I'm using is wet, uh, so I will not be watering him. Instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and use all my fingers, get in between the leaves if I can, and kinda just pack the soil down to get rid of all that excess air bubbles underneath there. And again, with all this lighting that I have for this video, be sure when you're repotting, just to kinda look over your leaves and make sure you don't see any kind of uh, filaments, uh, maybe something that's indicative of a, of a spider mite or a web or something, or any kind of pest kind of crawling around on it. And again, when you get these plants, you kind of want to do that too at the store to kind of look over the leaves as best you can, take some time, uh, sit there and look over, look in between the leaves, move some stuff around. If you see a bunch of like brown, uh, torn uh, spots on all the leaves, that may mean that it was damaged in shipping and that it's had, kind of had a hard little life. And then if you get that home, it probably will still exhibit signs of having a hard life, especially if you're not the best kind of caregiver for a plant. So make sure you do get one that's in kind of the best shape, especially for the money that you're, you're paying for these guys. This was about $14.98 and I probably would have paid double for that just because I like these plants and the size of this uh, this is gonna take a good four five six years for a plant to even get to this size because they are kind of slow growers depending on the light as I said and so the time is really where they get you with these plants so I definitely would have paid a whole lot more for it uh, again though you just want to make sure there's not a whole bunch of like rips and tears in there these plants can kind of take care of that themselves but if you see a bunch of soft greeny kind of openings that may be an area where rot or infection or anything can get into the plant so be mindful of that um, with some of this dead skin you can just pull off and the plant will be fine uh, but if you like your plant and then you kind of remove something that's kind of just hanging on and you've pulled it off and it looks like there may be an opening for your plant, I would use some cinnamon. Just sprinkle some organic or 100% all natural cinnamon over the scar or the opening because cinnamon is a good antibacterial and it will kind of keep your plant from getting an infection or let anything like that into your plant to cause disease. Again, as I was saying, uh, mine is probably gonna go in like a northeast uh, facing window. It'll get really good morning sunlight, and then about noon, it'll kinda start to dwindle down. And then for the rest of the day, it'll just kinda sit there in kinda moderate shade, 
But uh, if you have it in a south-facing window, that'll be fine. Just make sure you introduce it into the uh, sunlight rather slowly, especially if you've got one that's sat inside of a store for a long time. These leaves are going to be very sensitive and tender, and you can burn them, cause some scarring, and I don't think your plant will bounce back from that uh, once it's been scarred and hurt. So introduce it into sunlight slowly if it's been inside for a long time. If you're not sure, just err on the side of caution and uh, introduce it slowly. But uh, like I said, mine doesn't have any kind of shades uh, i think there are some blinds that it kind of will have to compete with but like i said it'll get ample morning sunlight and that'll be pretty good for it but they do like really really bright kind of maximum indirect sunlight so keep that in mind water again i only water this guy when about the first inch to inch and a half of the soil is completely dry if you're sticking your finger down there and there's a bunch of wetness or a bunch of dirt kind of mudded and mucked onto your finger, do not water it. Wait a week or two and then go back. Like I said, these guys with their rhizomes are really thick and fleshy and kind of bulbousy, and that will enable them to make it through a drought. So if you're not sure if you should add water, wait, because these guys will rot from the base and rot from the roots as well. And also make sure that your pot doesn't have a saucer on the bottom of it because that will enable the water to not really go anywhere, uh, but kind of keep it trapped up there for the roots and then the soil and leave it all kind of soggy and hurt your plant. Now I will have like one of those little plastic saucers that I'll put underneath the pot, not this one specifically, but one like that. Uh, and I will kind of pay attention. The excess water kind of run out of there and not onto my floor, but I'll empty that saucer whenever I'm done. So uh, if you're a forgetful person, uh, I would just drill holes into it and let the water leak out and hopefully set your plant on like a rug or uh, a towel rather uh, so that that can kind of soap up your excess water. Uh, but make sure that if you do have a pot or a saucer underneath it, which you should not, but rather something to catch the excess water, that you'll drain that as well. Fertilizer feeding. Make sure that you do feed. I'd usually feed these guys about once a month. They don't need a whole lot in the way of feeding. Uh, a regular all-purpose kind of uh, houseplant fertilizer that I dilute by half works really well with these guys. They are a foliage plant, so they do need something that's rather high in nitrogen to help them with their leaves and everything. But they can produce flowers and fruit. I don't think anyone's ever managed to get one to fruit indoors, uh, but I know that they can in the nature. With the soil, again, I use a quick draining soil, something that has a lot of sand in it. If you have a, a decent draining soil and you wanna make it a little bit better, I would add some builder sand to that. Uh, it's really kind of fine sand that they've washed several times to kind of get rid of the ex excess silt. So uh, that would work if you wanna kind of add that in there to help it drain a little better but they do prefer a pH slightly acidic around 4.5 all the way up to about 7.5 make sure that they do have a little bit of an acidic soil it's not something that needs to be totally acidic but a little bit would probably help your plant also pests now uh, these guys do have a problem with spider mites aphids and mealybugs mealybugs and spider mites work by inserting a prod down into the leaf and sucking the valuable nutrients and sap out of your leaves, basically sucking it dry, killing your plants by absorbing those kind of nutrients. So make sure you kind of look over that whenever you buy the plant and again whenever you get it home. Keep your plant secluded for about a day or two. I usually do about three days with any of my plants just to make sure that there is nothing that I'm missing that will get on there and kind of spread to my other plants because that will be hell. But if you do suspect anything like that, either return it to the store or take it out back, hose it off with the garden hose, make sure you spray it off really well, and then you can also use isopropyl alcohol on a washcloth and just kind of wipe all sides of the leaves all the way down as best you can. And uh, other than that, if you feel like you still have a problem after using the isopropyl alcohol, I would go ahead and use a little bit of chemical warfare. So uh, just be very cautious with that. A little bit goes a long way. It kind of tests it out on your plants a little bit first, unless it's something that you know and believe a lot in. As far as the aphids, I've always used Nat Nix. I don't know if you can see in this little pot down here but it is a superheated glass uh, that a professor invented and basically it's really super jagged and uh, you can apply it by putting it on top of the soil about an inch to an inch and a half or two inches deep and this prevents the bugs from burrowing down into the soil and laying eggs and the jaggedness of the uh, natnix actually 
enables it to puncture through the exoskeleton of the insect and killing it like that. And also anything that's kind of, uh, if you set your plant outside during the summertime and you want to bring it in now for the wintertime and you're not sure if anything's been burrowed down into your soil and laid any kind of eggs, uh, Natnix is a really good prevention for that just because as anything hatches and starts to come to the top, it will kill it as soon as it makes contact with that Natnix by jabbing it into its exoskeleton. So that is definitely worth its weight in gold, especially if you have any kind of problems with fungus gnats or any other kind of aphids like that, anything that kind of burrows into the soil and you're worried about it eating your plant's roots. I use Natnix a lot, but it does have its problems. Uh, a lot of people don't like it because when you uh, go to water the plant, it is so light that the uh, Natnix will kind of move around and you have to reapply it. And also it is really dusty. So when you're applying it, make sure you have the ceiling fan on high and you have something over your mouth because that dust will kind of get into your lungs and kind of really mess up your breathing. Given what it does, and what it can do uh, health problem wise and everything I think it's almost about even as if you are really cautious and turn your fan on and have something over your mouth and just apply it and then reapplying it as needed whenever you water but if you water your plant kind of slowly uh, you really won't have a problem with that either so I've had a lot of people ask me what I do about aphids or fungus gnats or anything like that and I just wanted to tell you guys Natnix is worth its weight in gold well guys that's really all I know about this plant I've had one of these for as long as I can remember. These plants are very easy to take care of. They're very beneficial to us because they really clean the air and are a very good uh, bedroom plant to have just because they do clean the air so fine uh, and remove a lot of the toxins and stuff. But side note, uh, this is mildly toxic. So if you do have any babies, I would not put them in that room with a child, especially any kind of babies that are kind of wandering around and putting things in their mouth. I would not have a snake plant, although I do have a nephew and I have not had a problem with it, but I do kind of watch and I do have several cats and a dog and I have not had a problem with any of my Sansevierias that I do have. So it is a mild toxic. It can actually induce vomiting and cause diarrhea, but uh, it won't kill your animal, I don't believe so because uh, I think the ASPCA has registered it as a mild toxin so it shouldn't kill anything but if you do have any questions or concerns let me know leave it in a comment uh, and I will do my best to kind of answer that and let me know if you guys have had any kind of problems with any of your sense of areas I love these guys there's just so many different kinds of them like I said you do have the kind of small compact robustas to the really kind of tall uh, Trifasciatas, uh, they are beautiful plants, easy plants to take care of, and like I said, they do take care of you. If you guys haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button or the bell next to it, that way you'll know anytime that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.